Can you tell the audience who you are? I am King William the 26th, King of the Low Countries, Duke of the Barklands, and Baron of these wretched plebeians. You may address me as Your Majesty. And why are you king? I am king because of the mandate of the Lord in Heaven. He has given me noble blood by which I rule these lands. My rule and the rule of my family is God's will. And as God is my witness, I will not allow any of the democratic rebel to take this divinely ordained task away from me. You are not a fan of democracy then? Pfft, democracy. Indeed I am not. As monarch is the well-being of the people my responsibility. If we would allow the people to rule themselves, then it will devolve into mob rule. Chaos and anarchy would reign, and no good civilization would be possible. There are people who would disagree with that, and claim that a democratic society would be a more fair society. Oh please, these people are deluded. They talk about liberty and equality and justice, like they're just something that can just be attained. This is extremely unrealistic and inefficient. If you look at history, then you will see that monarchies were the most predominant form of government. Do you know why this is, my dear subject? Because monarchies are the most stable and efficient form of government. Actually, there is quite a lot of historical evidence that suggests that centralized monarchies are relatively new things, and that in many places of the world the order of the day was a more decentralized and democratic affair. That is just some revisionism done by filthy leftist historians. Such anarchist tricks are amateurish, and you have to do better than that to get the better of me. Let's move on. Can you tell me a bit about the history of your family? Certainly. The House of Champagne Lübeck is an ancient house. It has its origins in both France and Germany. However, due to noble conquest, we managed to carve out our modest kingdom in these former swamplands. Since then, we have ruled with an iron but fair fist. Navigating our way to the great powers and crushing those who would oppose us but always treating our subjects fairly. We even managed to carve out a colonial empire. We got pretty rich of that. I'll give you this. <laughs> so you conquered this country from its original people then? Yes, but you have to keep in mind that this region was underdeveloped before we came here. It was just filled with barbarians in bearskins. We took these people and lifted them up for a higher purpose. Eventually, we would lead our people to greatness and build a massive colonial empire. So you are complicit in genocide? Genocide? No, no, no. just call it forced assimilation? That is still genocide. You should not throw around terms like that. It is a very complex issue. The natives were uncultured and uncivilized, and we just brought civilization to them. It is God's will that we enlighten these savages. If we make a profit from that, then that is just a bonus. We did not want to slaughter them and enslave them all, but God made these different races for a reason. We had to educate and culture them. This was the task God gave to us, and I think we succeeded pretty well. I think many victims of colonialism would fight you on that. They sure as hell tried. Besides, what do they have to complain about? We built massive monuments and structures for them, and they are just squandering its potential right now. If it was up to me, then we would still be in charge. Clearly, our education is incomplete. 
So much for the tolerant left. Let's change subjects. I understand that the House of Champagne Lubeck is part of a constitutional monarchy now. Can you tell us more about this? Certainly. As you know, my dear subject, are there many types of monarchies? Absolute monarchies, elective monarchies and constitutional monarchy. We used to be an absolute monarchy, which means that I would have had total power. Oh, those were the days. I could do whatever I wanted and no one could stop me. However, in our gracious wisdom, we have decided in the past to adopt a constitution. This is our gift to the rabble. This constitution limits our powers a bit. It gives the rebels some sense of self-agency into their actions. It takes some of the heavy weight of ruling from our shoulders and gives the people some personal responsibility. Then what kind of powers do you have left? I am crucial in the formation of new cabinets. I appoint the ministers and I can veto every law made if I want to. Of course, this rarely happens anymore because I am a gracious and benevolent liege. I am also politically untouchable, meaning that I cannot be prosecuted for my actions. Is that really all the powers you have? What about the massive fortune your house owns? Can you honestly tell me that it isn't used to leverage political actions or for lobbying via large companies? What we do with our money is quite frankly none of your business. I know that there are rumors that we support the fossil fuel industry and that we indirectly lobby against climate legislation. But it is all pure speculation by dastardly communists and anarchists who would wish to see us in the ruins. It is true that your house is exceedingly wealthy, correct? It is also true that you receive a large sum of money from the government on a yearly basis. Why should the government use taxpayer money to fund your excessive lifestyle? You don't understand. We need that money to maintain the order and do our work. Plus, you're only looking at the expenses and not the income we bring. We are quite the tourist catchers and the amount of money we deliver to the people via tourism is immense. Actually, the arguments that monarchies bring in more tourists than countries without a monarchy has been well and thoroughly debunked. Countries like France got rid of their monarchy, but they turned the former palaces into museums and still get the same amount of tourists as a result. You shall end this line of questioning now if you value your life. Very well. The constitution limits your powers a bit, but the old hereditary hierarchy is still in place. Some people would say that the fact that you have the power to veto any legislation is an outdated form of government. What would you say to those people? I would say that those people don't really understand the responsibility that comes with being a monarch. It isn't just a legislative thing, it is a symbolic, symbolic thing. What does a monarch represent? I would say that a monarch represents unity and stability. I unify the people regardless of their religion, race or class. Almost everyone loves me. If you were to take the monarchy away, then this unifying factor would disappear. Everyone would turn upon each other and start cutting each other's spleens out like animals. What about countries that abolished their monarchies and turned out fine? Those countries never had strong monarchies to begin with. They had something else unifying them. Look, we can play this back and forth game for hours, but no matter how you slice it, our presence is more of a good than a bad. We were bred to be leaders after all, and our noble blood ensures that we make the best decisions for everybody. So you support eugenics then? Ah! There the left goes again! Accusing decent people of such awful things like eugenics. You are stooping quite low there, my ungrateful subject. Can you see why leftists would have a problem with your hierarchical position, though? I knew it! You're in league with them, are you? I don't know what they told you, but you mustn't believe a thing of it! 
They cheat and they lie their way through life. All just to make us look bad. Answer the question, please. No. I don't see why they would have a problem with me. I mean, who could not love me? Everyone loves me. Actually, your approval ratings are at a historical low due to the scandals you and your family have caused a lot lately. Lies and slander! We just want what is best for our people. Sometimes this means that some people need to make space for others. What you would call slanders, I would call actions for the good of us all. How was going on a holiday in the middle of a pandemic, when everyone was told to stay at home as much as possible, necessary? We deserve vacations as well! We work just as hard as everyone else! This is going nowhere. I will be skipping ahead to my final questions now. About time! This has been a most unpleasant experience. Would you support abolishing the monarchy at some point? No. Never. It is our duty to defend and protect the monarchy as much as possible. Abolishing it is synonymous with treason! Can you understand why people would want to abolish it though? <laughs> From a very mangled perspective, maybe. Some people argue that the fact that you are born into your position and that you are more powerful and wealthy than everyone else in the country merits enough reasons to abolish the monarchy. What is your take on this? People always think that being a monarch is easy, but I would like to see them try to do better in a similar position. Just the other day I lost my 1000 euros ring and I had to have my servants turn over the entire palace just to find it. What if you could keep your wealth and property? Would you accept abolishing it then? That would make it more bearable at the very least, but no. Aren't you afraid that your reluctance to do reforms or retire the crown might end you up in a similar position as the kings of France at some point? That was a very different time period. Thanks to our guidance, are the plebeians more moderate now? They would not resort to such cruel violence as chopping our heads off. Are you sure about that? There are a lot of angry people nowadays, now that everything is getting more expensive while their income stays the same. Meanwhile, you are getting more wealthy and wealthy than ever. Yes, the people love me. They will love me. They would never harm me. And I will make them love me. I think that wraps it up for me. Do you have any comments or remarks? This has been a most unpleasant interview, but in my eternal wisdom I will allow you to publish it. Just remember, I am the king and you should do what I say. Now then, where did I leave my servant?